Hi there, good day. In this video, we are going to learn about Chai Assertion Library, which is used for unit testing in JavaScript. And we'll be learning in a series of videos. So in first video, we are going to discuss about uh, something called expect APIs. Uh, so if we open this page, Chai Assertion Library API guide, we can see that uh, this is what its expect API looks like and these things can be changed chained and we will see with the proper examples that how these things can be done so chai is a very simple and english like library uh, for assertions in javascript unit testing and this can be used with any test framework in this example i am using it with mocha test framework and so let's start to start with uh, um, Chai library will have to uh, uh, import the chai and I am importing the expect function which I am going to use it over here. So let's see what this looks like. So um, as you say we can say expect for example abc to be a string. And I'm be running this code like this, and the test is passing. So if I say is it, this should be number, then the test should fail. Yes, it fails. So this is the way we can write a very simple chai test. So here I am expecting it to be a string. Similarly, I can expect 10 to be a as you might have guessed is number and let me check this it works okay i can also write for the same thing as expect 10 to not be a string so 10 is not a string and let's check it again passed okay so it looks like i'm writing a english kind of thing over here okay but there are multiple ways of writing this uh, for example uh, let me get rid of this i'm writing expect 10 to be a number but there are other way i can write it i can say expect 10 has been a number let's check it's passed okay or we can actually say if you don't worry too much about our grammar it's have been a number it will still pass okay we can also write expect 10 which is a number okay and i i will just run the code and it will still pass so the so basically all these three lines are doing same thing and this is the multiple way which we can concatenate and write the code so again look into something else let me go back and write which is a number again but I can concatenate more things as part of this. So I can write expect uh, 10 which is a number but not a string but not a string. This is correct. So I write the test and it will pass. Okay. okay. Similarly for data types I can I write expect uh, for example true which is a boolean again but not a number this should also pass let me check and it just pass over here so these are the basic way we can write the test 
So these are all about primitive types. What if I want to check an object? So let me create an object. Uh, for example, where t var equal to name as abc age for example let me see 27 so i want to make sure that it's an object so what i will do expect t var is an object let me now let me go ahead and compile it pass i can also write expect t var which is an object See, it passed. I can also chain it again and say which is an object and has a property which name is name. And I'll run this code and see it passed. I can also copy this and make sure the name. I can also check the property with age. It says it passed. I can also write like but has a property or here have a property it doesn't make any difference the test will pass. I can also say that I can extend this over here saying that has a property name which is a and say a string. We see it works here I can say which is a number pass so you can see how I can just increase the chain to the extent I want it okay and I can uh, even extend it further for example uh, I say property name which is a string and what is the value of it to be equal I'll say ABC let me check this and it passed if I write something else over here instead of ABC if I write ABCD it will fail and it fails it's expected this and you come across it so look look at the messages it just keeps us to exact thing what is required if I say ABC it again goes and pass Okay, now about just if you just want to check a property, we can say that expect t var has a property name. I am just changing the property, and this way tests are passing. I can also say it doesn't have a property like uh, not have a property called address let me go and test it pass it doesn't have a property called address but if i say if i don't have a property called age it will fail because age is a property in this very in this object okay similarly i can check with many other things like uh, about true and false like uh, I'll say expect type of t var is equal to an object. Object to be true, just true. So let, let me just check this out and see pass okay similarly I can write a function over here saying that function some test fn and it's doing nothing and I can check expect type of uh, let's say test fn is equal to function to be true I'll run it, it's pass. Sorry, I mistake in the name test fn to be pass it passing. Similarly, 
i say i can uh, give up uh, another condition saying that x per type of t var equal to function and i check it against the false condition to be false and i run the poker it works okay now there are many other things which we can do like let's say if i want to freeze the object um, so i say expect t var which is not frozen this has to be true because it's not frozen and let's say i freeze the oh sorry uh, the var over here and now i'll say expect t var to be frozen now both should pass because i have frozen the thing similarly for doing a constructor based thing we can actually say that expect a new test fn to be an something like object and this will also pass okay so as we have seen this is the way we can actually chain and use the expect in many other scenarios i hope it has helped you to understand how we can use the chai js expect thing and with the next series we'll see should another part of chai js uh, so thanks a lot thanks for watching